Okay, we're back. Uh, right now I'm going to talk about the nephron, uh, the functional unit of the kidney, and I'm going to go through parts of the kidney and how you should conceptualize in your head what they do, and uh, also I'm going to go back to a little bit of what we just talked about. We just talked about clearance and creatinine clearance and inulin clearance and free water clearance. I want to add one more to that, and that is paraaminohypurate. You'll see it as PAH, uh, and I'm going to tell you what that's used for. Okay? So let's start with a uh, let's start with the PAH actually. So uh, if you'll remember uh, clearance, the concept of renal clearance is that uh, it represents the hypothetical volume, the hypothetical plasma volume uh, containing the amount of any substance excreted in the urine per minute. Another way to say that is it represents the amount of plasma that is cleared of something per minute. And the way you get that is you calculate the amount that is excreted in the urine. You do that by knowing a urine concentration and the urine flow rate. Uh, and then you combine that with your knowledge of what the plasma concentration is. You actually multiply those two, divide by the plasma concentration, and that will give you the amount of plasma uh, that contains that substance that's excreted per minute. So we said creatinine is good for estimating the GFR or inulin, but creatinine is naturally occurring. And we, in the body, and we said creatinine is good because it's filtered, uh, but then it's relatively inert to the rest of the tubule. In fact, creatinine is going to overestimate your glomerular filtration rate a little bit because a little bit of creatinine is actually secreted, uh, but that's not usually a big deal. Other ways you can get into trouble with creatinine is that creatinine is a byproduct of creatine breakdown. Uh, creatine actually comes, uh, well, this isn't totally correct, uh, but it's from muscle cells, it's other places too. Uh, and so it's directly proportional to the amount of muscle mass. So if somebody has a large uh, uh, creatinine number uh, and they're a little old lady, that actually might be a problem. But that's a different topic uh, looking at blood creatinine uh, concentration. Today we're talking about uh, PAH, paraaminohypurate, and the value of it. The value of paraaminohypurate, PAH, is that it is filtered uh, and then it's absolutely secreted. Okay, so uh, paraaminohypurate tells us the renal plasma flow. Okay, because all the plasma that's going into the kidney is getting completely cleared of PAH. It's being filtered and then it's also being secreted. So the way that's going to happen is you have your uh, you have your blood flow coming into the nephron. Remember, there's about a million nephrons per kidney. So you have the, the, the fluid, the afferent arterial coming into the glomerulus. Uh, there's the glomerular capillary bed, and then the efferent arterial is leaving. After the, after the efferent arterial leaves, of course, it loops around, and there's a capillary network, et cetera, et cetera, and that allows you to either secrete from the capillaries into the tubules or to reabsorb uh, from the tubules back into the capillaries and into the blood. Now, with inulin, we said it's filtered. Uh, and then it just goes to the tubule. So whatever comes out this end, whatever's excreted, uh, is equal to the amount that's filtered. Good, we're happy with that. For PAH, uh, like I just said, it's going to be filtered, and then the rest of it, any that's left, is going to be then secreted into the tubule. So to whatever we collect represents the plasma volume that's coming by uh, the kidney. So how do we do that? Well, I just told you that the PAH clearance is equal to the renal plasma flow. And it's a clearance just like any other clearance. So the way we're going to calculate it is I, okay, I have it written down here, but we'll get to it in a minute. Let me, let me come back to that. We're going to calculate it just like any other renal clearance. That is urine's on the top. So the, the clearance is equal to the urine concentration times the urine flow rate divided by the plasma concentration. That's clearance, whether it's creatinine, pH, or water. Now, the only thing you need to know to get from this plasma concentration back to a renal blood flow, which you might want to know, is the hematocrit. Now, I'm sure you remember hematocrit from undergraduate studies. It's the percentage uh, in a sample of blood or in your blood that consists of packed red blood cells. So if you take a sample of blood and, and you spin it down, uh, you can actually do this pretty easily uh, with micro capillary tubes, uh, you'll get uh, some percentage that is packed red blood cells and then you'll have a thin layer of white cells uh, and, and platelets that you don't see, uh, and then you'll have uh, the plasma on top of that. 
So a typical value might be around 40 or 0.4. It uh, depends a little bit on the sex and some other things, hydration status, etc. Uh, so, but for today, let's just consider that everyone's hematocrit is 0.4. In reality, it, uh, if you have a problem, you'd be given the hematocrit. So if you have hematocrit and you want to figure out what the plasma amount is, you just subtract it from 1. So if you consider this is all 1, you consider that 40% of it is hematocrit. Okay, so that would be a hematocrit of 40, or you could say 0.4. Then 1 minus that hematocrit uh, gives you the plasma concentration. Okay? Uh, so you can get a plasma concentration of 0.6 in this example. So how are you going to use this? Well, if I told you you have 200 mils of blood and hematocrit is 40, how much plasma is there? Uh, you would say, okay, 200 uh, is my blood sample. I'm going to multiply it by 1 minus hematocrit, because I just said that's equal to the amount of plasma, and that's going to give me my plasma, right? So in this example, I have 200 mils of blood. I multiply it by 0.6 and I get 120 mils of plasma. Okay, that should be relatively straightforward. Now, when you combine the two things I just told you about, uh, PAH clearance, and uh, how to get a total blood flow from a plasma number, you can now determine just from PAH clearance what your renal blood flow is. Okay, so here's a sample problem. Let's say you have a hematocrit of 40%. 